Hi, uh, my name is Sue Grant from Burthen and um, I'm sitting aboard uh, FPP 78-2, Grey Wolf 2, with her lovely owner Peter Watson. And uh, we're in, a, in Lymington um, at our marina on a grey day in England in very early um, spring. So um, we're going to have a chat this morning about the Grey Wolf project because of course Grey Wolf 2 is the second of two FPBs, the first being FPB 64-6, which um, affectionately known as uh, Little Grey Wolf, which uh, Peter bought in New Zealand and then uh, steamed back across the Pacific to the Channel Islands where he lives and then hence to Lymington. Um, so that was a huge adventure and uh, you can read a bit about that uh, in, uh, on our website. Um, and then, of course, whilst that was happening, this amazing boat was being born in New Zealand and she too has uh, made an even more exciting journey from New Zealand and is back here in Lymington on the same dock as um, her little sister docked at um, a few years ago. So, um, Peter, uh, Grey Wolf, Little Grey Wolf, and the trip from uh, New Zealand back to the Channel Islands and then here. Can you tell me a little bit about that trip, the route and the crew? Yeah, sure. Um, it was very interesting. I had done a lot of, a lot of sailing, um, both sail and power, but never done any very large trips. And um, I looked at shipping the boat back and then thought, no, let's drive it back. Which we all thought we were completely mad, you, yes, you know that, don't you? Yes, yeah. and, and I know Steve thought I'd never make it. Yeah, that's uh, Steve Dashu. Yes. <laughs> um, so I assembled a um, group of individuals. We were very lucky we had a retired naval architect from the MOD um, and a retired chief engineer and um, myself. And we went down to New Zealand, prepared the boat. We also had on board um, a couple of apprentices from, from one from the yard um, who came all the way back and an apprentice from Berthon who um, came all the way up to Tahiti uh, with us and then we had another apprentice join us. Um, I think we had to phase them before yeah. you broke them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably true. I think. Yeah. So we had five um, people on board, Little Grey Wolf, which was, was quite a lot really actually because mm -hmm. the accommodation really um, was only for three. Um, or three different cabins. Um, but anyhow, we made our way. Um, we had an interesting route because we went up and used the counter currents um, that are north of the equator. So we went very far north, went up to Tahiti, and then we went right up north and used the counter currents to take us all the way into Panama. Um, from Panama, we, we came out of there and came across to the Azores and then back to Guernsey. And, and how long did that take? It was three months. Yeah, that was, was quick. Yeah, I, mean, I think it was pretty quick. Really quick, yeah. yeah. And then of course, whilst all that was happening, um, Big Grey Wolf, this boat, was being born. And you must have learned um, a lot, you know, putting in those major solid sea miles about what this boat had to have because she was built for a bigger adventure yet. Yeah, um, I've always, admired and, and the naval architect that we had on board uh, admire Steve's designs from the point of view of capability and comfort. Um, maybe, maybe the looks are not quite, well they look a little industrial but um, people are very surprised. Purposeful, yes. we like to say. Yes, people are very surprised when we get inside. Mm. Um, 
so we we learned a few things I think on the on way up and I think one of the well two main things make sure you've got the spares on board you might need it certainly in the Pacific you're miles away from anywhere and about access and just being able to get to things easily um, and I was really lucky with working with Steve on the design of this boat because there was a guy called Pete who'd previously owned a 64 um, there was Steve who'd obviously got lots and lots of experience and myself and it was very much a collaborative um, process I think of, of building the boat. Obviously Steve designed the main hull and his, you know, it was uh, one of uh, a number of hulls, successful hulls that he's designed. Um, but then we both, we all worked together as a group in terms of what do we want to decide, how do we want it to look, um, what equipment do we want to put. Each boat's slightly different. Because of course these the, these are the owners of the 378s because Steve yeah. took hull one, Koshis, um, and she's actually also here at Berthen at the moment um, having a refit. Um, two is, is this boat and three was um, Iron Lady uh, two. Yeah. The second of Pete's FPBs as you say. Yeah. yeah. So we worked together um, and worked on the design. Um, in the meantime, while I'd been back in the UK, I'd gone back to college and um, passed my chief mate 3,000 ton. Huge job. Yeah. Lots of paperwork. Yeah, lots of paperwork. Learned an awful lot. Um, and then I went down and spent nine months in the yard in New Zealand, um, just making sure the boat was built as I wanted it, which was, was great fun. Um, and it was really interesting working with the New Zealand guys. They, they, they're just so good at aluminium welding and um, the fit out internally is superb. Yeah, I mean the boat looks, she's done a lot of miles now and she looks just out of the box in many respects, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah, absolutely. And, and for you, one of your really important things was that this, this boat would be MCA Category Zero. Yeah. And everybody looked at you and said, so why? We wanted to be able to take fair paying passengers, but that wasn't the main objective. The MCA have got a reputation for years of, of having a standard which is probably one of the best standards internationally. So I wanted to make sure the boat was as safe as it possibly could be. It didn't need any reference to a safe port, and that's one of the things about Code Zero, um, and that it passed everything that the MCA could throw at it. So it is, out of the three, the only one that is actually coded to zero. Okay. So when, um, after trials and everything else, and you left New Zealand, and of course you came back to the Channel Islands in the UK the pretty way via the ice. Yep. So um, extraordinary uh, route. And so during that trip, that um, series of adventures, what was the standout part of the trip home? I, I think it's got to be Antarctica. Um, it was just wonderful um, going down there and, and seeing um, the animals down there and being able to interact with the wildlife down there. Um, and what about the route to get there? Right, well, so the route was quite interesting. Um, we went New Zealand, Tahiti, and then to Tahiti to the Macaza Islands. Sorry, I think, uh, no, sorry, the Gambia Islands. Um, on the Gambia Islands, we shipped out fuel and um, 45 gallon drums. Seriously? Yeah. Filled the boat up from 45 <laughs> gallon drums um, and then we went on to um, past the Pitcairn Islands and on to Christmas Island and then into Chile. And what was Chile like? Chile is an absolutely lovely country uh, with lovely people. Um, it was interesting we spent quite a bit of time in one of their naval bases and I hadn't realised that the British Navy does a lot of training for the um, Chilean Navy. Mm -hmm. and, and they did ask me interesting questions about, you know, um, which place was the worst weather, North Sea or the um, Magellan Straits. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what did you tell them? Well, I have to say that basically crossing to Antarctica was definitely more uh, adventurous than the North Sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the weather through there goes through, uh, it seems to have a regular cycle of every three days and you have to go out into the rough weather to get the smooth weather to then... You make the transit? Yeah, yeah. the transit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, once you got to the Falklands, you met up with um, Iron Lady 2, yeah. 
And so then what happened? The two boats went in company? Yeah, no, we, we met up with them in Chile. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, so we met up with them in Chile, and then we went down through um, Chile and then to Antarctica together. Um, spent a huge amount of time down in Antarctica, um, about three weeks, I think it was down. We were down there. And then uh, we came back up, and uh, we split off to the Falkland Islands, and they carried back up to um, Chile. And, th and that was, that must have been, because um, I know um, you and Pete, um, affectionately known as the two Petes, sort of uh, dubbed it as sort of family cruise to Antarctica. Yeah. I mean, it, it was <laughs> There was yes. a bit more to it, yeah? Yeah, there was a bit more to it. <laughs> it, it certainly is, um, it was, it was pretty challenging. I was glad that we had full crew on board um, because you would stick your pick down somewhere. Um, the charts were useless, more or less. Um, you'd stick your pick down somewhere and then um, you'd be perfectly fine with the ice going in the opposite direction and then the wind would change and the ice would come towards you and you had to debate whether you could push the smaller stuff off or whether it was time to lift the anchor and move on. Wow, and tell me a little bit about the wildlife. We saw a huge number of orca um, down there and we got some absolutely fantastic drone footage of orca. Um, I went ashore with penguins and sort of, I actually have to say that um, by the end of the trip I was pen penguined out. <laughs> um, and seals, um, all, all, all sorts of wildlife down there. But yeah. it, it's a very special place. Yeah. And so then back um, up into Europe. And so, how many FPB miles do you think you've done between the two wolves? Between the two wolves, I would think that I, I must be, I'm way over 80,000 nautical miles between the two. I think it's probably actually more like 100,000. Wow. So, this boat must have been done the equivalent of circumnavigation? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She's got to have, hasn't yep. she? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so, what do you love about her most? Just, just her capability and comfort. Um, and, and the fact we can have family and guests on board um, and we've got some accommodation for crew if we need crew or sometimes we do it without crew um, and the you know uh, you don't go looking for bad weather but you know the boat can handle it if you do hit bad weather um, we, we sort of certainly one of the most interesting things was I think in uh, Chile we um, anchored and we had a hundred knots on the nose um, wow. and the anchor and all the gear just held no problem at all. So if you think you have a family trip to Antarctica this is probably a good choice of boat. Yeah definitely, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much Peter. It's so lovely to be back on the Big Wolf. Um, I think um, I saw her when she was first launched in uh, New Zealand of course and she's always been one of my favourites and um, you've been so amazing to work with and it's been such fun to follow and be part of the Grey Wolf adventure. Well Sue, so I've really enjoyed it and I've really work, enjoyed working with both of them. They've been very helpful and supportive and worked with me. We think you're completely mad obviously. Yes, that's fine. <laughs>